Welcome back to Physics Junction. In today's video let us talk about synthesis of nanomaterials by bottom-up approach. Bottom-up approach refers to the build-up of a material from the bottom. In other words assembling it from building blocks. That means atom by atom, or, molecule by molecule. This is called bottom-up approach. The different bottom-up approach techniques are chemical precipitation, electrochemical precipitation, sol gel, hydrothermal, chemical vapor deposition, molecular or atomic condensation and spray pyrolysis. Let us start with the chemical precipitation method. Chemical precipitation method is a simple wet chemical technique. Here solid phase precipitation process takes place which is attributed to supersaturation of the solution as a result of chemical reaction. This method includes three steps like chemical reaction, nucleation process and then follow-up crystal growth. In metal nanoparticles preparation, it allows the complete precipitation of the metal ions. And mostly nanoparticles of higher surface areas are prepared using this method. The various factors to be considered during the preparation of nanoparticles are high degree of supersaturation, homogeneous mixture of precursor solutions, post thermal treatment, and a uniform growth time for all particles. The different advantages of chemical precipitation methods are as follows low cost, high yield of products, a uniform distribution of nanoparticles, an appropriate method for fine particle synthesis low preparation temperature and simple equipment setup. This method has few disadvantages too. Wide particle size distribution, agglomeration and uncontrolled particle morphology. The next method is called as electrochemical precipitation technique. It is an efficient procedure to prepare metal nanoparticles. The requirements are, a substrate, two or three electrodes, the electrolyte solution and a source of electric current. In actual process, it employs electric current as driving force to deposit a nanocrystalline thin film onto a suitable substrate. While the preparation of metal nanoparticles, a metal sheet is anodically dissolved and the intermediate metal salt formed is reduced at the cathode later, giving rise to metallic nanoparticles stabilized by tetraalkyl ammonium salts. The important factors to be considered are right choice of the chemical agents and the process conditions. The control on particle size is achieved by adjusting the current density or applied potential and electrolysis time. The different electrochemical techniques are given as cyclic voltammetry, potential step, double pulse deposition. The advantages of electrochemical deposition are rapid synthesis time, no chemical reductants or oxidants. No undesired byproduct, better adhesion, no elevated temperature, and synthesis of nanofilms with diverse morphologies. The third technique we are going to see is sol gel method. The sol gel process represents the chemical transformation of a system from a liquid sol into a gelatinous network gel phase, with subsequent post treatment and transition into solid oxide material. In this figure, the first one represents sol that is solid particles dispersed in a liquid. As well the second one represents a network of particles with pores and the pores are filled with liquid. The last one indicates the network formed by the sol particles. In other words, we can say yes, that the liquid precursor is transformed to a sol and then converted into a network structure. Now let us see the various steps involved in sol gel synthesis process. Step 1. Hydrolysis. It is a chemical process of decomposition of precursor materials. Step 2 is known as polycondensation process. This is the formation of polymers, by the combination of different monomers involved in the process. Then step 3 is gelation. It indicates the formation of a three-dimensional network by chemical or physical cross-linking. That is called sol-gel process. The final step is the removal of water or another solvent by evaporation. The numerous type of materials prepared by this sol-gel process are nanoparticles of metal oxides, metal chalcogenides, ceramics, borides, and nitrides. The important factors to be considered in sol-gel process are nature of precursor, rate of hydrolysis, aging time and pH of the precursor materials. 
then advantages of salt gel methods are listed as high purity, achievability of uniform nanostructures, and low processing temperature. The other techniques we are going to discuss are hydrothermal and solvothermal methods. In hydrothermal method, the nanostructured materials are attained through a heterogeneous reaction, carried out in an aqueous medium at high pressure and temperature around the critical point in a sealed vessel. In this process, to withstand high levels of heat and pressure for a long time, the autoclave consists of thick, steel-walled cylindrical vessels which have a hermetic sealing. In solvothermal method, the reaction is carried out in a non-aqueous medium. Both are useful methods for producing various nanogeometries of materials like nanowires, nanorods, nanosheets, and nanospheres. The significant features of hydrothermal method are as follows. It is more suitable to grow crystalline phases which are not stable at higher temperatures, as well as the materials with high vapor pressure, larger sized and high quality nanoparticles, and provides control over their content and composition. The next one is chemical vapor deposition, CVD. In this method, the gaseous precursors react to form a solid coating on a heated substrate. That is, in CVD, the formation of thin film on the substrate occurs via the chemical reaction of vapor phase precursors. It is an excellent method for producing high-quality two-dimensional nanomaterials. The precursor qualities are such as adequate volatility, high chemical purity, good stability, low cost, a non-hazardous nature, and a long shelf life. The choice of catalyst plays a significant role in determination of the morphology and type of nanomaterial obtained. Here, the surface processes are ordered as chemical decomposition, surface migration and site incorporation. Let us see an example of generation of carbon nanotubes by CVD. Initially, a substrate is heated to high temperatures. Subsequently, Hydrocarbon precursor gas is slowly introduced into the system. Due to the decomposition of the gas molecules, carbon atoms are released, which recombine to form carbon nanotubes on the substrate. Here, the decomposition should not be result of residual impurities. The next preparation technique we are going to see is molecular or atomic condensation. In this method, the chemical reaction of the precursor leads to the formation of clusters by nucleation. Here the condensation represents growth of small nuclei clusters to nanoparticles. It occurs only when the precursor vapor is supersaturated. The size, shape and the distribution of nanoparticles is mainly controlled by the rate of evaporation, rate of condensation and the gas flow. Moreover, inside the furnace, Material heating takes place under an inert gas such as nitrogen or helium which promote the chemical reaction. The preparation sequences involved are as follows. Suspending the precursor materials in a gas phase, transforming the precursor material to small clusters, enforcing the growth of these clusters to a nanoparticles, method to collect prepared nanoparticles. Thus, it is a suitable method to prepare metal oxide and metal halide nanoparticles. The next technique is spray pyrolysis. It is a method of preparation of nanostructures using liquid phase precursors. It is used to deposit thin and thick films, dense films, porous films, multi-layered films, ceramic and nanopowders. In particular, to coat layers with uniform thickness on a large area this method is very useful. The processing steps involved in spray pyrolysis deposition are atomization of the precursor solution, droplet transport, commencement of chemical reaction in the droplets which is followed by solvent evaporation and drying. Now let us see advantages. Simple and affordable. Provides high purity products at low cost, starting from easily available materials. The properties of spray deposited films depend on the substrate, substrate temperatures, spray rate and droplet sizes. And the droplet size depends on spray rate, nozzle diameter and carrier gas, carrier gas pressure. The next technique is soft and hard templating methods. Both the methods are greatly used to produce nanoporous materials. 
Soft template method is a simple and an alternative useful method to fabricate mesoporous materials. In soft template method, the used template materials are made up block copolymers, flexible organic molecules, anionic, cationic, and non-ionic surfactants and 3D liquid crystalline mechels. The figure demonstrates the dispersion of precursor materials into the matrix of template and the structure of nanomaterials formed after the removal of template. The significant advantage of this method is controllable poor size and structures. However it has few disadvantages too such as low thermal stability of hydrocarbon-based soft template, collapse of porous frameworks during the crystallization and the removal of soft template. The last one is hard templating method. It is a direct synthetic route, called nanocasting, technique to obtain mesoporous structures. It uses solid templates which are infiltrated with a carbon precursor, for example, sucrose, furfal alcohol, phenolic resin, pitches, followed by its carbonization and template removal. The single crystalline as well as the polycrystalline oxide nanomaterials can be prepared because of its resistance of the rigid template to high temperatures. It has few disadvantages too, less adjustable of pore size and pore structures, inevitable nucleation at outside of pore, low yield, high cost and complicated preparation. I would like to end up here. Then references. I hope this video is more helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.